Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to do a barn shelf. I did a regular barn, I think a year or two ago it is on my channel. So it is scrolled back in a bunch of the videos that you can find if you wanna look at that one. That one is actually made with the regular size Jenga, not the DT ones. Um, I just wanted to have a shelf and I wanted to do a silo and just kind of thought it'd be really cool to have a, a barn shelf. We are going to be using the blocks from DT. You can find them in the kids section in the toy aisle at Dollar Tree. If you can't find them there, I'd suggest ask a manager. Sometimes, uh, I know sometimes managers, my local manager, sometimes when they get them in, they do give me a quick shout when they get them in if I need some. If you are in the US, you can order them online. Some crafters say that you can order only three boxes at a time and they ship it to your store for free. Some crafters say you need to get a case, so I don't know if it's just by area that DT picks. You have to, or, or, excuse me, order a certain amount. Um, and then you can also look on the DT DollarTree.com website because they also do, every once in a while, they give you a flat rate, $5.99 shipping rate to your home uh, coupon code, so you can keep an eye out for that. I am using Wellbond. You can buy it at Rona, Lowe's. Pretty much a lot of the stores carry it. Um, Nikki has told me you can get it at Hobby Lobby. Um, my preference of glue, I would not use hot glue on any Jenga block builds unless you're just gluing on a piece or two or you're just reinforcing in a spot while you're using wood glue. I know DT does carry wood glue, but my DT does not carry wood glue. I have never seen wood glue in my store, but I'm here in Canada, so I don't know if they just sell that on the, on the US site or on that side of the, the border. Now, I suggest when you are using Wellbond or any other glue, when you are gluing them together, is just making sure afterwards before you do paint it, even with stain or regular DT paint, that you make sure that there's no little, um, sometimes the glue leaves just a little bit of a shiny mark that squeezes through the blocks as you glue them together. I would suggest is just taking a buffer and smoothing out that little shiny spot because if you do put glue over it, you are gonna see the shiny spot no matter how many coats of glue it does, it does show through. This one's a little bit bigger build, so I do suggest having a pen and paper as I go along um, and just mark them. I'm gonna try to, uh, I do pre-glue most of my stuff together, at least sections, so this video is not three hours and try to make a shorter video as possible, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer. So I am gonna to try to go a little slower today, guys, um, just because it is a bigger build. So we're gonna start with the base. When we are gluing blocks together, I do suggest buying one of these at Dollar Tree. They're found in the uh, automotive section, hardware section, and the L-shaped ruler is like an awesome thing to, to use, especially when you're gluing a bunch of blocks together because it does keep them straight. Not that the, the blocks are very straight. Some of them are a little bit different sizes. If you worked with them before, you'll know. You're gonna glue sections, so everything's just gonna be the one way stacked over like this over one another and that's how the first part of we're going to glue part of it together first before we move on so I don't confuse you all we're going to start with the base the base is where the barn and the silo is going to sit on and I'm probably at one point going to have to just zoom out so we can fit it in now we're going to start with the base and the base has 28 blocks on this row and another 28 blocks so that's 56 blocks then we are going to do the sides now i call them the main sides and you're going to need two of these and you got 22 blocks glued over another 22 blocks times two which is 48 or sorry 44 and then 88 I'm, we're gonna, I'll show you how we'll put them together. I'm just gonna do the basics first. Then we're gonna do the shelves. Now, the shelves are going to be inside the, the barn. And it's gonna be 18 across 
and another 18 across times two. So you'll need 72. I'll give you the total number at the end of um, the tutorial when we get near the ends, gluing all the pieces together. And then we're gonna do inserts, which is just gonna be like um, a border separating the shelves. I am gonna do two different sizes on my shelf and I'll show you that one when I'm, we're gonna glue it together in a second. So the first shelf has eight across and then another eight across, which is 16. And then another one that's nine across and nine across, which is 18. So let me just switch the view of my camera. Okay, now we got the base and turn it sideways like this. We are going to add one of the main sides, as I call it, the one that has 22 row. And we're gonna put it right there. We're gonna take one of the inner shelves right here, and you're gonna place it, and you're just gonna wait before you place it. So remember those little inserts? We did a, tall, a taller one, an extra block, and a shorter one. We're gonna stick that one right in here. So as you glue it along, I would start this way and work your way this way to glue pieces on, and then you can adjust, and then you leave it flat, lying flat like that to dry. And I would, I'm gonna leave mine for a good five to six hours before I start playing around with it. So I'm just gonna set it. Now the inserts you can add, you can make them shorter, taller, you can even add an extra shelf if you made the inserts shorter. I'm just gonna add this one right here. So this is the one with the eight blocks and this is the one with the nine blocks. And then this is the top inner shelf. You're gonna place it like that. And then one of the main sides is gonna go right here. I'm just trying to make it even here. So once you get it together like this, you're gonna to wanna to let it, like I said, leave it to dry. Now, the marking right here, because I'm keeping this, because we're gonna add something here with the silo, is I'm gluing it on the mark and you're sitting the top main sides and the middle insert right on the piece of the base. You're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine left pieces sticking out. So you're gonna have this piece sticking out. So you're gonna glue it just like this. All right, well, I'm letting it dry. So I did glue together. Now, if you don't wanna put this extra piece on, you can omit the nine extra blocks and plus the two rows, the 18 blocks here, and just keep it like that. But like I said, I wanted to put a silo here. So I want a backing onto the base of this. So I am gonna add this piece. Now this piece has 54 blocks and you're gonna have a row of 20, it's going left to right, 18 and 16, almost kind of like a step going down. And I'm gonna glue it right on the side, right here and right at the bottom. This little piece has a little gap, but we're not gonna really see that piece anyways when we glue it on. So I'm just gonna move this over. I don't wanna shift it too much, it's still drying. So I am, while this piece is gluing, I am gonna attach this one. All right, now that we have it all glued together, I've let it sit for a good five hours and it's pretty solid doesn't shift it's super solid so the next thing we're going to do is the top and you are going to need is right across here is seven and another seven and then you need four of these i'm just going to try to place them now this is the little tricky part you got to let dry dry really well I want it to look more like um, a barn top of a roof instead of just a plain, uh, a plain just steep roof like that. Cause I've already did one of those in my other video, which is a little bit different for the, um, the little plant houses. So I'm gonna put my ruler here. This is right the center uh, 
of the blocks on each side. So I just want to make sure that the peak, I just made a line here that I'm going to put the proper tip of the corner so it is centered. <clears throat> and I'm just going to put them, I'm going to move this down because I want to make sure you guys see this in the video. I'm just going to move it down here right like that. Then you're gonna glue right along the edge right here. You're gonna glue it there. And I think it goes about right like that. And this part here is gonna be against the side. So you just gotta find, find the spot and then the marking. The top side will be on the edge. And it's going to kind of go like that. I just want to make sure that the peak is in the middle. So I just want to make sure it's centered. That it's going to be like that. So you're just going to have to play around with it. Once you get the glue on there, you're gonna have to let it dry. So I am just gonna let it dry overnight. Once, it is still gonna be a little bit wobbly, so I don't know if you've done some of my other ones. Then you're just gonna stick, even when it's a little bit wobbly, you are just gonna take a paintbrush and give it like an hour. Once it starts setting, two hours, and just paint some more weld on in the little cracks all the way underneath on the inside in there as well. All right, now that I have the top glued on, I did do, like I said, I actually did a third coat in between the cracks all the way around. I'm gonna move back th to that in a second. So if you don't wanna add this part or this part, the total parts would be 288 Jenga blocks without this and the bottom part from this side. Now the total count for with the silo and the extra side bottom here is 360 blocks, which is five boxes. But this is a very big build and it's gonna turn out lovely. Now, I'm just gonna switch the camera here because I wanna show you how we're gonna fill in the cracks on top. Okay, now we're gonna do the cracks. I did the ones on the side and I'll show you those in a minute. We're just gonna take some hot glue and you're just gonna carefully put some in there. You're not going to fill it right to the top. Try to be careful on the ends so it doesn't seep out over the ends here. Then you're going to let it dry. Make sure it's fully dry. Now I see a lot of uh, crafters using spackle so I know my DT does not carry spackle. Um, this is just like spackling which is for like I guess you know for I use it for putting in uh holes in the you know little holes of uh, the nails in the wall and just doing patchwork when I switch around things it is pink and when it's dry it to turns totally white um and I just I never use it on any of my crafting and I thought you know what I tried clay before the air dry clay from DT and I did not like it um, I think it was on my other barn that I did and I found after a while that it did, uh, sh it did, it does shrink, but I just thought the spackling, this would be workout so perfect. And I'm just going to switch it on the side here and I'm going to show you. So I just filed a little bit and I need to do a little bit more, but it's just more smooth. The hot glue will actually have a, an extra seal on here just after you put the other weld on and it'll just make it more tight as well as the spackling will actually make it a lot more smoother when you paint it. All right, now that I've finished the spackle on top, we are gonna put a backing on the barn shelf and I don't have the um, a white foam board, so I am just gonna use cardboard. I don't have a big enough piece of cardboard. I just have two pieces. I cut one already and I'll show you. This one, what you're gonna do is find out where you wanna line it and you're gonna take a pencil and you're just gonna draw 
on the inside lines all the way around. Once you take it off, you'll have the outline, but cut it just a little bit, um, just a little bit inside the line, just to make it a little bit smaller so it's not sticking out around the bottom. I'll show you, I already did the bottom part. Now I've already cut this piece, which will go on the back because like I said, the piece is too big. And you're just gonna flip over. I'm gonna turn it upside down, guys, so it's gonna seem upside down. I'm gonna turn it um, this way. You're gonna take your piece of board and you're just gonna glue it all the way around and you can see that it covers not the full part because you don't want it sticking out on the sides. And I am just gonna use some Well Bond. By the time you put hot glue all the way around, I don't want it seeping out of the seams. And by the time you start doing all here and get over to here, the hot glue is going to be dry over there. At least that's what happens with my glue gun. Once I have it down, I am just going to put some stuff with a little bit of weight to keep the corners down and let them dry. Now that I finished filling in the top, which came out really well, we are going to put a backing on the barn. I only have... Um, pieces of cardboard here that I already cut for the back, but um, you, it's better to probably use one piece, but two pieces is fine too. A uh, white foam board, but just remember when you're, don't use scissors to cut it, use an X-Acto knife. Now on the back, I have the one piece to go here, which will be obviously on the back that I've already cut, but the top part that you wanna get it more around, I'm gonna stick it on there. I'm just gonna to try to even so because I'll have two pieces instead of one. Now you don't have to put a backing on it if you don't want either, that's another option. Oh, I'm just gonna show you here. You're gonna trace on the outside of the barn top all the way around. And I'm just gonna to go to the sides here because, but if you had a, because my board's gonna end right behind this shelf and then continue on with this board. But if you're gonna use one piece, you're just gonna tra trace the outside of the barn. You're gonna have to stop here if you're gonna do the silo part, but you'd go just straight down because you don't need to cover the back of the silo because you already got the blocks here. But you just go all the way down. And then once you're done cutting the board, I'm just gonna flip this one over. I'll just show you the bottom part. I'm gonna put it on an angle like that. And you're just gonna, glue the backing on. Now I am just gonna use the Well Bond. I would not suggest the hot glue only because by the time you keep going, going around the framing to actually glue it on and get to the other side. I know with my hot glue, my glue gun that the glue will already be dried by the time I get to the other side as I go all the way around. Plus I don't want any of the hot glue uh, seeping at the seams that you will be able to see it on the other side. So I would suggest that once you have that, whatever glue you're gonna use, just put something a little bit hard on it just to keep it down flat and that it glues properly the backing on. All right, now that I got the backing glued on to the back of the barn, I am going to paint the actual barn red on the sides. The top part of the barn is going to be black as well as the inside. I am just going to keep this black as well as the platform underneath black, but everything else will be red besides the top as well. And I'm just going to use the DT paint. I am my favorite red from DT is the Tuscany red, and that's the one I'm going to use. And then just the regular black for the sides and the bottom here. While I let the barn dry, I, you're, we're going to make a silo to go on the left side of the barn. doesn't matter, I guess, regardless on what side, if you don't do the side of the silo, which is fine. These are two water bottles. They're just spring water bottles. I got the grocery store. It's natural. I think it's Selection. It's just a no-name brand. Uh, 1.5 liter. Try to find ones that have the, the little bumps like this in it. Gives it a better effect. You're going to take the first one. And I already just cut here so I don't cut myself I'm trying to get in. You're just going to take about that much off the top. About that much off the top. I'm just going to make sure it's even. The bottom part, 
Now that will be the top part. Then you're going to take your second one and you're going to take just a little bit more. So it's going to be tall, but that's okay because the barn is super tall. Okay, like that. Now, this will be the base part. I would stick rocks uh, or sand in there to keep the bottom heavy so it doesn't tip over easily. Once that is done, you can pop this one right in there. I know it's hard to see in the, the whole shot of my camera. And you're gonna wanna, I'm gonna use some Wellbond with the hot glue sometimes it loosens up and I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna cut a little bit of the base off once I stick it in. Just a little bit, actually it might be okay. Once you get this glued together, you're gonna have, not at this one, put the rocks in before you glue the top on, unless you're gonna take the base off. Once that part is, you're gonna get these little bowls from DT. I think they come in a two or three pack, I can't remember now. Just gonna glue that right on top there. Once you have this all glued together, I'm just gonna put it on like that. I'm gonna paint it. Now, instead of painting it, you can get the silver. Uh, Dollar Tree does have a silver paint. I'm just gonna use some, I just have some uh, rust paint. It's just the same thing, high gloss as what I have on hand. I'm not sure if I have another. <laughs> But this is closest is to gray that I have. And I am just going to use this and spray that on. All right. Well, the silo is drying. Uh, I want to make some little hay bales. Now, if, I don't know if you've seen my original, um, my original barn that I did, which wasn't a stand. It was an actual barn that was open. But I did make some hay bales with corn, canned corn. I wanted to do in the shelf, so obviously the canned corn were just way too big to put in the shelf. So I got these spice jars from Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna show you. Just to open up, they just look like this. I wanted something, you could use cans. I thought little cans like uh, pizza sauce. We don't really use that around my our house, so. I just opted with these. I thought they'd be perfect because they do get bigger once you add the jute rope. Now, I buy mine at Dollarama only because I get this much rope for $1.50 and you get a lot less rope at Dollar Tree. And we don't seem to carry it always in stock. So this is the one I'm going to use. And how you're going to start the top of it, I'm just going to put some in the middle here, just some hot glue. And you're just gonna start it and let that sit for a minute. And you're just gonna wind it around. And you're just gonna keep going in circles. You're gonna keep going all the way around. I'm just going to show you. I'm not going to glue it all. But as you go around, once you get to the end of the lip of the jar, I would just go over the lip a little bit more. Just keep going on the sides like that. Because when you do it around the, the main side, it's going to stick out a bit. So you want to make sure that the top is flush. So having it out a little bit more overlapping the top part of the lid. And then you would just keep, ooh, this is staying pretty good. Then you would just keep going around the jar. So you wouldn't have to cut it. The only part you're gonna cut is when you get to the end. So once you keep going all the way around, it's kind of like doing as you did the top, but kind of backwards. Once you get to that side, you're gonna stop in the middle. Now, once you stop in the middle, you're just going to pinch the end with a little bit of hot glue and it will just keep it from unfraying. And I'm just going to show you one here that I already did all the way around and like that. So I already did two. I am going to do three 
for one of the shelves in there. I'm gonna get that done. Right, so I wanted to show you the barn, which is now painted and fully dry. I didn't have to do, um, I just did touch-ups. I only had to do one coat. I really like the Tuscany red, it's my favorite red. Um, now the suggestion I will do when you are going to paint it to make sure, I didn't know at the time when, when I glued on the back what colors I want to do. So if you're going to do the same color, I'd suggest to paint the cardboard in the back. The red part doesn't really matter, but um, the back part, it's just a lot easier. So I had to go over just a couple times just to make sure the lines were straight here. But I would suggest painting it prior to gluing it on just makes it a lot easier. I also found that doing using that spackle was like really good hole filler from the hardware store is awesome. This is a game changer and now I have like 10 more million more ideas <laughs> what I want to do. So that is done. Now I'm just going to go over a couple things before we start putting some stuff in there. Now these came out really well instead of, you know, I had to pay here in Canada we pay $1.50 per item in our Dollar Trees. We're not like the U.S. at a dollar and a quarter. We pay $1.50 most items. Uh, some are a little bit cheaper, but majority of the time it's $1.50. Instead of paying separate, you can also use um, toilet paper rolls, just cut them a little bit shorter, and just take some foam board and put a top on each end of the paper towel or paper toilet paper roll. Uh, just so you have something to do your circles on and that it doesn't pop in. You just got to make them over the lip a little bit more, the toilet paper roll. And I am pluck this off the, I'm going to put this at the top of my barn and you'll see that after. It was just, a, I guess, a magnet. I don't even know where it was from. I do a lot of um, thrift stop thrift stores, Valley Village, some of the Salvation Armies. I go in there and look for knickknacks because a lot of the times when I'm doing crafts, I just find cool little things like this. And I think I paid like 50 cents or a quarter for it. And it's gonna go at the top of the bar. It was on my other, um, I did Jenga block houses that with a bunch of flowers, um, I'm sorry, plants that I have in other tutorials, but I am gonna, put this one I plucked it off like I said and that's going to go at the top of my barn because it's going to totally fit in if you cannot find a rooster DT does carry roosters laser cutouts like this which works out as well you can paint them it can be more colorful they also have the little one like this that you can sit on the end as well when you glue it on that this part of the leg will actually sit uh, perfectly right under the nook of the top piece of the barn. And here's the silo. So it's, I'm just trying to show the whole length here. When I was painting it, I realized I showed you guys the wrong color i did uh when i started painting i'm like why it, it didn't ring a bell until after i looked i'm like you know what this is the wrong one so i did use uh rust-oleum the metallic um one that bonds to plastic works totally awesome i only had to do like a coat and a little bit of a touch-ups and worked really well for i'm just gonna bring the barn back up here Now for the barn, I do, you can get this from DT. It's just uh, the home sign. I think there was another one. I can't remember. There's another saying that they had as well, but I really like that it had the windmill on here as part of it. For the top being here, I find it a little bit too short. So I am going to add just a layer of eight. I'm not going to do it in the total count because you can make this a little bit shorter as taking one or two or three blocks off to bring the the top of it down but I'm just going to add it right on to here to add and I'm going to glue it right on so it's just an extra piece on here that's going to sit once I put that in there I am going to add just some fairy lights now if you only have the battery operated one I have the little fairy lights with the slim one I am just going to add it to the back of the sign just so it lights up in the back 
and I'm not gonna glue it down. I'm just gonna try to place it with some Spanish moss around the edge. So you can't really see the, the bottom part of the home, just kind of conceal it a bit with giving it a little bit light in here because the dark the black top makes it a little bit darker. There's a couple different things you can do for your fillings in here for the shelf. Now, the, you know, Dollar Tree does carry some cute things and we've all seen this one. They've been out a couple years now. And that one is just gonna go right in this corner. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do it upright. I'm gonna change the camera and show you. I'm gonna stick it in this one. I am gonna stick the hay bales in this one. I'm just gonna move this. And I got at the thrift store. So I did my other barn and I had barn animals. So I just think it's gonna be a lot cuter with it in there because it is a barn. Now this one, one of these are from DT and, or maybe they're both from DT, but I know these ones are from my Dollarama store, just the cow and the pig and with the horses. Now, on the section, when I turn it over, I'm going to show you for just the horse section, I want it to pop a little bit with the white. You can get these uh, clipboard shapes, which are just the traditional um, fence. I did paint it white. And in one of the squares, and I will show you that when I turn the camera upright, when I have the, t the stand, the barn standing upwards, I am going to put this on the outside and it fits just perfectly where I have moved the one shelf to the side. So let me change the camera and I'm going to show you. All right, for over the, before I turn um, the camera around to show you the stand, so over the home sign, I just thought it looked a little bit too empty. So like I said, if you want to, unless you have another idea, you want to drop it down a bit, just take a couple blocks off the side so that the top of the barn will be lower. So I am gonna fill it in with just a, a little window here. Now, I did it more rectangular just because it's more of a rectangular spot I wanna fill over top. I had a wood, square wood dowels. I get them at Dollar Tree, I only had one left. So I just took the one piece and cut it more in the rectangular, the four all the way around and glued it. The top part, which you don't need the square dowels, you could just use the coffee stir sticks from DT. And that's what I just did to do the crossover. I painted it white and then I just rubbed a little bit of uh, some um, gray from Dollar Tree as well. So I'm gonna get that glued on and I'm gonna turn the camera so you can see what it looks like on the finished look. All right guys, so I got it all done. Little roosters glued. I really like the little window in the back. It makes it pop on top just for to have the white. If you wanna make the the top part of the barn a little bit shorter just take out a few more blocks so you won't have that much space uh the little hay bale is just a nice added touch with the farm animals you don't actually have to put farm animals you can do whatever kind of decor maybe have some cowbells um you know some kind of door decor that you have at home be great to change out for christmas time adding a little bit of a different christmas scene to it the little fence is just a nice added touch on the bottom as well. And the same thing with the silo. I just think it turned out really well. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Give me a thumbs up and let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.